Hello guys, we're back <laughs> playing the people and Grandmaster Barakobian. I'm here with Caleb Gosin. He's going to be co-hosting with me today the stream. And we're going to be basically playing uh, players and taking some questions and, you know, and talk about uh, chess in general. So you can put your uh, comments in the chat and Caleb will take a look and maybe see what the good, good questions are you can ask me so the time control we're going to be doing is three plus two guys so try to just challenge that time control uh three plus two okay so that, that way we can get as many games as possible so we're going to start out with this game against 1576 and we'll try some french maybe huh uh -huh. a little <laughs> french defense you know see how that goes so we have the classical, and I will try this sharp line today, the Vinover, yeah, Vinover variation. So he takes, I take, I had a game against Grandmaster Bortnik actually, in the recent FIDE uh, uh, Fall Classic tournament. So, let's see, my opponent is... Bishop D3 though, right? Yeah, my opponent is playing very confidently, so, <laughs> right, let's see, C6? Um... Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if this is so good, this A3 before, because now I have 97, 95. A little bit of weaknesses, you know, to deal with. So I go here. My main goal, guys, is to get the bishop on F5 here. This is very important, okay? To get the bishop on F5. Somebody wants you to play the check peers. Check peers! We could, we could play the check peers. I like playing the check peers. Somebody asks for a good system against the Scandinavian. Ooh, you know, I'm more of a D4 player, guys. I'm a more of a D4, so I'm sure there are some systems here. Uh, if I don't know some, if I don't know some opening, I just go to chess base, I put the moves in, and I hit the a reference or online button and then I see all the top games played by grandmasters that's how you learn what the best is you know if I look at what top players are playing so that's generally what I go with unless I'm like it's my it's my specialty you know mm -hmm. so I use chess base to figure out what's the theory and what people play I would recommend you that put the moves in in chess base and hit the reference and hit uh, or online database and and you're good to go. So we castle here. Now we have already a pretty good advantage here. We got queen e7 coming up, rook a8. Uh, this c4 square is going to be very useful for us. So the question is, what do we do here? So we don't want to take yet, yeah? So we play queen f6, protecting the knight. Rook a8 is coming up. And why, th why the a rook? Mm -hmm. um, why the a rook? Just natural reaction, but there's nothing wrong with rook f8 as well. Okay. Uh, not a big difference here. Uh, let's go this way. I feel like we're not really going to be doing too much on a queen side, you know, so I just want to keep. But rook f8 was absolutely fine move too. Okay. Okay, what is he trying to do with this? Yeah. I don't know. A double up. Can we do that? Double up. Okay. Now we want to play a six. Just fix the structure. Rook f8. We got knight d6, knight c4 coming up. <clears throat> a6, fixing the structure. Just take. 
Someone wants to know um, what you think about the CD5, Knight D5, Bishop D2 variation of the Grunfeld. CD5, uh, sorry, CD5, Knight D5, Bishop D2? Mm -hmm. oh, I like that. I play that system actually sometimes. I had a good game against Sam Savion. It's very good. Yeah, definitely. It's a very interesting system. It probably doesn't give much advantage, but it's, it's pretty good. So Queen D6 now with threatening mate on H2. Before it's hitting, let's see here. It should be a mate, no here, Caleb. Look at this. Should <laughs> be a mate here. Hmm. Where is the mate, huh? Let's get this guy in. And. Bishop g3. Check. Mm. If it goes back to the back rank, we take the. And if knight g3, queen g3, king f1, then just rook c3 or something? Yeah. Yeah, see, I just played very simple chess, guys, in this game. I didn't do anything really special. Just uh, winning the winning the material and the game. Okay. Natural natural moves in chess. Most of the time, the natural natural moves they win the game. So that's the idea. All right. Um. What can we say about this game? Just, you know, French exchange, typical stuff. I think this A3 before was just too mm -hmm. early, you know? Yeah, why didn't we understand the position? He yeah. didn't have a good plan. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have 30 people already in line waiting. Hmm. Let's see here. Again, time control is three plus two guys, not 10 plus two, not five, oh, three plus two, that way we can get games in before we move on anything else you see interesting there any other um well so it's certainly interesting somebody asked have you ever played one c3 <laughs> one c3 <laughs> no no i i'm a very offbeat guy i like to just put my pieces to good squares not a really very offbeat yeah person so let's see can we get to play that grunfeld line that somebody was asking about mm. Okay, so I will uh, play this system, guys, just to demonstrate to you my specialty of Smyslov Petrosian, okay? Smyslov Petrosian setup. So we go drop it. Now Bishop D3. Knight on a6 is unclear. What is it really doing there? Do you have a profession besides chess? Someone asks. I teach professionally. Many mm -hmm. students. I do a lot of teaching on uh, on the internet. Uh, yeah, that's what I do. Just chess, you know, mm -hmm. teach and play. That's what that's what I do. Now we play four, and we take. This is how I like to take here. Just keep the pressure on. Another h3 to stop all the bishop g4 business and everything. Actually, the knight is very badly placed on c7. People sometimes get into this position; they don't realize the knight is really bad on c7. It's got no future. And now I just simply play, let's say, queen d2, rook e1. I don't mm -hmm. know if he's trying to play b5, but I don't think it's going to work. Okay. 
Okay, so... Okay, let's... Now we just say, give, me, give us the pawn, yeah? <laughs> give us the pawn on d6. I guess he has to play when bishop f8. Yeah. Okay, I play b3, just strengthen things up. Take. We take. Let's see what reaction we're gonna get with this. Takes. Uh, a little questioning, you know. A little, little questioning on h6, you know. Let's see how what do we get, you know, because mm -hmm. we want to induce some pawn weaknesses. When you're playing a blitz game, it's not important to try to play very deeply. It's important just to put your pieces on good squares and make moves that put pressure on the opponent. That's all you got to do in a blitz game. You don't have to play very deeply. If in a standard game, yeah, you can try to think about a deep plan. <coughs> B4, okay. What is this B4? Do? Okay, so we try to trade knights, that's fine. As you can see again, where this knight is badly placed on c7. Closing the queen side seemed like a bad idea for black. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it was still worse, you know, but now it's maybe... Maybe it's more worse than before. Now I have to choose between rook a7 or rook e1. So I don't know. Let's go rook a7. Now h6 is still vulnerable. I don't know what is he going to do. Is he giving us a pawn now? What's going on? Okay, on h6. Four, two, two. Check. If we take on h6, he's going to take on e4. Take, take here on 7 is a check. King h2 takes queen f4. Feels like overwhelming advantage, yeah? Mm -hmm. Let's see. Let's see, Caleb. It's gonna work this or not. A lot of times you go uh, for initiative. You know, if it looks like you have some activity, initiative, you go for it. Take. So you play it this way. Now we have knight g5. I'm thinking to go, yeah? Knight g5. Check up. All right. King up. Four. We got this monster check coming on e6, you know. Queen there. What is he trying to do? It's a 96 check. Where is he going to go there? That's the question. So maybe g3 was better than f4, actually. So you have 96. Nice to queen g6. Well, I didn't think that this line was that good for him. But I can just play even like a normal move here. Yeah, queen e2 and something. Mm -hmm. I think I'm just winning. I don't think, uh, okay, it's queen c1, maybe. Okay, I, let's go this way. Okay, let's play a little bit more creative. Queen h4. Mm -hmm. Oh, we got 24 seconds. 
Okay, so the time management was not that great in this game. Okay, we should be still good, and he blunders the coin. <laughs> okay, it was probably hopeless anyway, but... And we win! Okay, so... Yeah, this was a nice uh, positional game. We got some small advantage and get some ideas. So, do we have any... Do you think Ding will win the World Cup? I think so. I mean, no. Isn't he like... They tied, yeah? They tied today, so I think I think so, yeah. Isn't... I mean, I, I hope Rajabov wins. That would be a pretty big surprise if he wins, but yeah. And then they also have this match for the third place, apparently, they're playing. That's That's kind of important for the candidate tournament, too. All right, what do we have next here? Uh, we have 39 players in the queue, so I don't want any unlimited uh, time control games, guys. No 10 minute games. Three plus two, once again, is the time control, so please make sure you're challenging me in three plus two. And we're gonna get this game now going. Oops. And against Nenad, Nenad, 1974. Someone asks if you're a good cook. Cook. Uh, eh, <laughs> I don't specialize in cooking, but I, there's certain things I can cook, mm -hmm. you know. But no, I'm not a, uh, I don't cook too often. Okay, so this B4 is a funny stuff, actually. I used to play this as white, so I'm a little bit familiar with it. It's not that bad, you know. But I will just play a solid system, uh, the, 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 uh, the B4, yeah? It's called Sokolsky? Yeah, or the, no, or not the orangutan. Ar orangutan, yeah. Should be pretty bad. <laughs> That's... I mean, it's not that bad. I mean, it's... Yeah, see, I already misplayed it. Mm -hmm. Playing too casually, and then... This is what happens. You just... Uh, I should have just, just played a little bit more. Uh, all right, let's try to play creatively here. A6. Mm. Ah, it's okay, it's just, just I thought you would play queen d5, knight c3, then just retreat the queen. Should be five? Knight c6. Yeah, I could do that. But I don't think it's that bad, this position. I don't think it's... Okay, what is it trying to do, e4? I just need to do something against e4. That's my main thing. So I go here. Uh, but then it's, it's... Okay, let's get the rook. Okay. So on a3, you're playing knight b to d5. Knight c2. Knight a3. Pawn is a pawn, no? Mm. Pawn is a pawn, Caleb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we got a good position already. Right I think uh, my opponent should have played a3 instead of h3. Mm. And now it's, it's a little bit uncomfortable. Let's get the knights rolling in, huh? What do you think, Caleb? Mm, looks good. Knights coming in. Centralization. Knight b3 is a strange move. Knight c3, we business we got as well here, too. Bishop d3, wow. Mm, just taking bishops. 
it's now. Uh, well, this is hanging. That's right. right. So let's uh, let's do this first, huh, Caleb? Opa! Putting pressure on that bishop now here. Can you suggest a good chess book? <laughs> oh, you can suggest several, I assume. Yeah, well, it depends. What do you what are you looking for? You know, let's think. Opening book, meal game book, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. end game book. I mean, a workbook. Uh, you know, really, really, a bit more specifically, what kind of book? Uh, do you have ninety two? I have knight a2. I have also. I have also other things I can tr try to do as well. Something like bishop d5 looks interesting. I can also just play queen. Yeah. Ah, just go bishop d5. Trade queen d5, rook fc8. Uh -huh. Just, just a comfortable position. Plus on 92, I think he had d5. Yeah. It felt like he might have something. Give it the queen. A pawn is a pawn, right? Mm -hmm. Pawn is a pawn. What is the best opening book for 1d4 players? 1d4 players. Opening book. Uh, Avruk. Avruk has a good book on d4, but that's probably a little bit more for advanced players. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I definitely recommend his, his uh, repertoire books. I think Mikolevsky also wrote books. About Mikolevsky has a book, probably, yeah. Um, yeah, but again, you know, opening is something that, you know, if you have the chess space, you can study base, you know, with a chess based opening. Mm -hmm. Okay, what is he doing here? Let's see. Queen d6. I just want to double up my rooks, actually. Okay, we gotta go a little bit faster because it looks like we're running low on the clock. Mm, and 92. as that <laughs> happens, he <laughs> blunders the tactica. Well, when we ahead, Caleb, never trade. afraid to trade, yeah? Never afraid to trade. You take back with a pawn, right? Of course, of course, we take back with a pawn to get the pawn rolling in. Push. Tooks. And we push the pawn. Perfect. All right. And he resigned. No? Mm -hmm. C2, C1. Mm -hmm. Winning the, winning the game. Uh, yeah, this is uh, this is an interesting game. I mean, I allowed this c takes d5 mm -hmm. in the opening, but but it seems like it was okay. Actually, it wasn't that bad. It seemed like white should be a little bit better because the center pawns. I know, but it's tricky because I also have the wing. You know, I have a clear pawn at ninety six. Rook c8, knight b4, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you should play a3 here. This was a bad move, h3. You should play a3. But it's a game, you know. Someone is really curious about what you think about the London system. Uh, it's playable. I World champion Carlson played against me. It's, it's playable. Definitely. I don't play it myself as white. But, uh, you know. I think it's if you don't want to study a lot of theory, it's something that you can consider playing at 
uh, I don't usually recommend it to my students because mm -hmm. I think in the long run you should learn the theory but uh, some people play it it's uh, you know okay this is already kind of awkward he's giving me a tempo I'll go here again again some tempo so this is okay for me uh, he wants to play okay let's go d6 here Queen c7. Just want to get the pieces out here. Nothing super fancy. Yep. Nothing fancy. <coughs> Could you have played d5 instead of d6? Or is there a reason you did? Well, then he plays c4. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't want to simplify the position. I wanted to have some position like this where it will be. Rook F C eight. H six is good. We can get A five in. I would say if I was probably I wouldn't have done it in a slow game because knight b1, knight c3. Right. I thought it was but strange. It's a blitz game, so. But knight b1 maybe, I don't know, a4? A4, b4? Is that an idea? Yeah, right. Okay, we can we can try. So he's, he's just playing uh, solidly, this opponent. He's not really doing that much to create things. He's just just playing safe. Five, Caleb will try to trade stuff up, open up the diagonal. Hey, hey Danny, can you bring me one when you come? Me back? too. Yeah, uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, need some energy, huh? Uh -huh. Need some energy. Red Bull. Uh, yeah, guys, if you have some. Fun questions, feel free to ask. I'm gonna try to do a eight in one here, Caleb. Night, does oh. night free work? Ooh. No. I really wanna do it. No, he'll play e4, I think. I really wanna do it, Caleb. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. What's happening here? Check. It doesn't quite work, unfortunately. Huh? Why doesn't it work here? King h1, yes. Uh. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if he takes, I'll be happy, but he doesn't take, Caleb. Hmm. What do we do now? Knight f3, knight g5. Knight a7. This A5 really was <laughs> proved to be bad. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't normally play A5, guys. Just, just put it there. Why didn't you play at the World Cup, someone asks. World Cup? I, I didn't qualify, guys. <laughs> uh, otherwise, I would have not missed the World Cup. But I'm going to the ILO Men Tournament next week. So you can watch my games there. Uh, it's going to be very... It's going to be a lot of fun. All the top players are there, and... I'm seated like 90 something there, so should be a good challenge. A lot of good players, opportunities, you know. Looking forward to playing the strong tournament there. Okay, uh, I don't like my position that much, to be honest with you, Caleb. Mm. Uh, should we get rid of this knight? Now, at this point, we kind of conceded that. Uh, but, okay, this uh, four doesn't work. But the fact that he played a four, it's good now, yeah? 
we can maybe use this to our advantage. So come back. I need to speed up a little bit. Speed up just a little bit. Okay, rook d7. I will double up. I'll play bishop a3. Play the bishop c on there. Yeah, we're, we are slightly, slightly worse, but his clock is ticking down, so that's a good sign. So that means he's not comfortable. Can I go d5, Caleb? Hmm? Looks good. Why not, huh? Why not? change the character of the position a little bit. fine because now his b3 pawn is equally weak I've got nine seconds uh, what do you do when you don't play chess what are your hobbies oh what do I do I don't know let's win this game first and I'll tell <laughs> you check does this work does this work Caleb had no time. I think so, yeah? Queen f3. He resigned. A loss of time. Takes. Queen f3. We should... Okay. Yeah, I think it works. Yeah? Doesn't have a check on d8. E4, bishop e4. So, yeah, we got the knight f3 in, finally in this game. Uh, my hobbies are... What I like to do, I like to uh, enjoy uh, some good food. Go out, eat. Mm -hmm. some different food with friends travel uh, enjoy traveling you know new countries you know meeting different people uh, you know sometimes watch some sports play some sports you know uh, those are the things I like to do yeah when I'm not playing in tournaments but uh, most of the time, I'm just busy with chess lessons, yeah, that's what le I think. lessons, lectures, commentary, uh, group lessons, tournaments. I'm still competing, guys. Not as often, but you know, I played. I played three tournaments this year: Gibraltar, Classic here earlier. No, played four. U.S. Championship three. Played the Classic four, five, six. I'll probably have. Two more classical events this year. Well, Isle of six Man, classic, and then what? And then a November Classic here. Oh. And then probably uh, at the end of the year, I'll go to the World Rapid and Blitz tour Tournament. Have you ever been to Poland, someone asks? Poland? Yeah, I've been there once. I played, uh, when I was a kid, I played a tournament there. In, uh, uh, we used to have this annual tournament in Polanica, Zdruje. So, played it when I was a kid. Um, yeah, I would like to go back to Poland. I have some friends from there. So it would be nice to visit. Didn't we had this already? Mm-mm. No? But I never know how no, to play I actually had a lesson earlier today. My student played the game. So, yeah. Yeah, this is the best way to play. Just And don't put the pawn on c4 here, guys. Put the knight on c3. There is no... There's no need to put a pawn on c4 any longer. I think they normally play knight c3 before f4. I wonder if there's a difference. Yeah, no, but it's probably it's, not. It's, it's, it's no problem. It's just same. Same knight f3 next. So this we play a4 to stop it.
Okay. Letter H3, what do you think? Yellow. Mm, I guess so. And black's playing so strangely, it feels like you should do something more. Okay, but it is knight h5 here. Okay, yeah, put okay here. H3 is useful in it stops knight g4, knight e5 ideas. In general, it's good to have the pawn on h3 in these positions. What's your plan here to play an eventual e5? e5, yeah. I might just do it now, actually. Can I? Why not, huh? Yeah, it looks pretty good. I think my pieces are pretty well placed here. Hard to find a move for him. Oh, <laughs> probably the best move. Probably, yeah, because bishop e7, d6, right? No, it's probably the best move, actually. This was a good sacrifice. Impressive. It's, it shows that, that the player uh, uh, understands that the importance of the dark squares, you know? I think it just shows that he understood how bad his position was. That's true. <laughs> That's true. It was probably just losing if he didn't play this. It's funny, now if you play this queen c7, I'm going to sack back on f6 and go queen h6. Mm -hmm. So. Objectively, I should be just winning here, I right. think. But mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't look like anywhere close to enough. Yes, Caleb, we get it. Boom. Counter back. Counter sacrifice. It's always enjoyable when you sacrifice and expose opponent's king. Yeah. And then go for the attack. So he has to play a five. The checker. Don't know if there is anything else, but again, it's a blitz game, so we don't need to go too deep here, guys. We just take. Okay, what do we have here? Queen h6, bishop h7. Yep. That's just simple. Yep. All right. Excellent. Uh, yeah, so this was interesting, actually. Uh, we break through with e5, and, you know, essentially, maybe this bishop d7 was actually a serious mistake because it allowed e5. So. In fact, he probably had to play knight d7 here, Caleb. 97, 95. 97, 95. And mm -hmm. Still worse, but manageable, maybe. But this, just this. Now I'm touching bishop f6, and... Ma Matelvaro Moisenko. Okay, so let's play d4. Let's see what opponent will play. d5. So we'll see what we'll have. Queen is going to be declined or Slav. We have the QGD here. 
knight c3 and this line. So I would play e3 here. I know e4 is the most critical. Yeah, and now f4. Sometimes I like to play this in blitz oh, for fun. Yeah. F4, for fun, you know? Uh -huh. It's th probably not the best move here, but. Yeah. Okay, then I, then I get this. Maybe, you know? I think I played this position in one of the streams either yesterday or last week. I want to go bishop d3, knight f3, get my, get my development, you know? I feel like after f4, you should have played c5. Yeah, mm. that's, that's actually an excellent point. Yeah, I hit this exact position before, actually. Queenside kind of close like this, F4 makes a lot more sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now we got a dream position. Yeah? Got Queen A7. Yeah, this is just really bad for block now. C6 is very weak. I have knight a4, knight b6 ideas. Mm -hmm. so I have to probably take this guy. As you see, guys, my moves are very natural. I don't really have to think too deeply here or I need to do this and that. No, mo most of the moves are just very natural. And I just pin him, right? Bishop a5 I have, knight b6. And when you have a good position, Moves they play by itself, you know? You don't have to uh, dig too deep, you know? Trade into a favorable end game now. I want to go rook a1, rook a7, g4. Okay, you can have that. <laughs> you can have that pawn, no problemo. Yeah, because on rook b8 you have bishop d6. Yeah. Now that uh, we win the bishop after b7, so and then b7 takes, we take on c6. Again, we gotta make sure we don't blunder anything, but we're not going to. He's giving us a knight. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Do we have any? 
Any other interesting <laughs> questions? <laughs> Who is the man next to your version? <laughs> okay, this is Caleb Gosden. He works for the chess club. Tell us, uh, tell our audience a little bit about yourself, Caleb, so they know. What's your rating? Um, like 2180. 2180. And how old are you now? 20, 21. 21 years old, young, strong, uh, almost master, right? Almost. Almost master, what, like 10, 10 15 points away? Mm, 18. 18 points away from getting the master. And he trains. I see him train every day, doing a little bit of work at least every single day at the chess club, right? Mm -hmm. Using the books and studying. So Caleb should break 2200 very soon. And uh, and you work for the chess. Tell, tell a little bit what do you do for the chess club. You. Uh, I'm a chess associate, so I just help run tournaments. Sometimes. In tournaments, yes. Uh, sometimes I'm on these streams. On the streams and... Uh, Sometimes you were arbiter, right? If yeah. they needed like an arbiter for a tournament. So, mm -hmm. excellent. All right, uh, let's see. Well, uh, if you want to play me, guys, you get in the queue, okay? And the queue is getting bigger. We got 29 people in the queue and we got only half an hour left now. So. Pick the strongest one. Pick the strongest <laughs> one, not, oh my goodness. GM, any GMs here? No, <laughs> no, no. Who is the strongest, Caleb? Sacrifice, sacrificial master? Let's see. Yeah, dude. Ooh, let's see. Sac sacrificial master. Master sacrificial, let's see. So we picked the strongest opponent. Well, now let's see what we got. Ooh, should we play that line? Sure, yeah. Somebody suggested this, so let's do it. Oh, you should have... I mean, you could have played takes in knight a4. That's, you, you get oh. a lecture about that. Yeah, Nadanian, Nadanian variation, yes. Didn't I play that before? Mm-hmm. Nadanian variation. Who did I play that against? I can't remember. Was it, didn't I have, like, a game recently that I did that? Okay, our opponent is thinking. It doesn't look like he's very familiar with this. So that's good. So that's very, very good. Mm -hmm. Okay, we take. Queen d2. The feeling is we should go h4, h5 and mate here, but it's not so e easy, you know? Mm -hmm. We really got to get the development first. But this is a favorable position, I feel like, no? Queen a4. C4, I have bishop d3, I have so many ideas. Now c4 is coming. <laughs> okay, rook c1 here. Takes bishop c4. He's not really developing his pieces. Yeah, h4, h5. Mm -hmm. <sighs> hmm. Should we try to mate him? Or. Feels like we should like try to mate him, but. Like queen h6, knight g5. Yeah, but he's got some checks, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is a definitely a strong opponent, guys, so we cannot just uh, do anything, yeah? Right, let's just play normal chess. Yeah. Okay. Even though we want to just win, but we just, you know, let's just play normal chess. Get the castle and get things rolling, okay?
Okay. The first question is, what does it play against queen d5? First question comes to mind, right? Mm -hmm. uh, hmm. Should we try it? Maybe he overlooked it. Maybe he overlooked it. Maybe you can play queen a5 and queen c7. Mm -hmm. shouldn't work. Well, we're up a rook. And it looks like Take right to get the c6 square. Get the bishop. This is attacking our rook, so we're not going to blunder the rook. Just protect. <laughs> we take more pawns, right, Caleb? Okay, what's going on here? We could take play G three. Oh, this pawn is hanging, so let's take. G3, King G2, right? Game over. Consolidate, huh? Consolidate, Caleb. That's <laughs> all we gotta do. So this was the strongest opponent that was challenging us. So we decided to take on it. Forky? We have a Forky. We can just take the pawn. And King G2, okay. We're not gonna blunder mate in one, right? All right, let's go here. Ooh, ooh, that's interesting. Okay, how about this? <laughs> okay. We're up, to, what, are we up two rooks? Mm -hmm. That should be plenty, it's right? Pawn, but I guess I'm not a pawn anymore. Yeah, when you have a bishop like this, you, you're in good shape. Bishop is just cuts off the knight. The knight loses his effectivity, okay? Because the bishop only two is cutting off the squares. Okay. All right, guys. So this was the strongest opponent uh, we had. who was challenging us. 2300. And uh, what does this rematch say? It's just like he's rematching us. Yeah, he or wants you to re <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we gotta give. Uh, he wants a rematch, our opponent. All right, any other interesting questions? Um, someone just asked, "What's your pre-game pre preparation in, in tournaments?" Pre-game preparation is just basically, uh, you know, look up the opponent, what he plays, mm -hmm. uh, create a little file see what games he plays, what openings, to have an idea. And then, you know, I don't like to prepare too much. I want to just save my energy for the game, actually. So I don't really, I'm not one of those guys who prepares for four or five hours before the game. I, I, I prepare definitely, but not that extensively because, you know, anyway, there will be a lot of surprises and uh, different things. So that's why you don't want to, you know, 
I personally don't prepare that extensively mm -hmm. because then you're just going to be tired for the game. But I know some other people, top GMs, they like to prepare for a very long time, you know. All right, so what do we got here? We got a 1648 opponent. Let's see if he's going to move. So we got, we'll get a couple of more games in. So... Uh, so someone asks if your teaching uh, affects you, your playing level. Well, it it it's uh, it definitely takes up a lot of my time. Mm -hmm. So, but I really enjoy teaching, working with people, helping them to improve, so they can see that they're getting better, getting good results. So I really enjoy doing that. Uh, you know, I also have uh, you know really strong students, grandmaster students as well. Mm -hmm. You know that I work with. And uh, of course, it's a uh, different training when I work uh, with them. So we're going to do a little check perk huh, for our uh, audience. He requested to do a little check perk demonstration here. Will he play knight c3? Well, what else? Yeah? Bishop d3. Okay, bishop d3. <laughs> okay, well, bishop d3, e5, then, just e5. then we don't need to play c6 anymore right. in this position. We can just play e5 and, and play c3, d5. We could do that. Well, that, oh, I thought that was a kind of theory. No, we could. We, we're, we're, we're not like obligated to do that. We can play differently as well. But yeah, that's probably just the simplest, equalize. simplest way to equalize the game. But our opponent already not very familiar because he spent more than twenty seconds. Mm. So that's that's good. So Okay, what is this? Let's take. Let's get the tempi, son. Huh? What do you think? Little tempos are always good, right? I'm always reluctant to play ED4 in these structures. Well, we, it's the tempos. I know. Okay, I know. And now he gives us a uh, bishop. Mm, that's just bad. This is very nice now, no? G6, bishop G7, no? Yeah, it's nice. This is just a wonderful position now. Bishop goes on G7. Castle. Probably needs to play c3 at some point. Yeah, but it's already worse, yeah? Mm -hmm. Slightly worse because I have the pair of the bishops, guys. Yeah. Rook e8 is coming up, putting pressure. Who's the most knowledgeable chess player today? Someone asks. Most knowledgeable chess player from the elite players. From elite players, I'd say probably Anand. You know, uh, who would know more than Anand about? You know, he's been the top top player for such a long time. You know, mm -hmm. I'll probably go with Anand. All right, let's go B6. We should be seven. I mean, there are other ways to play this position, but I mean, this looks pretty reasonable. Bishop b7, putting some pressure. Okay, what is this? this bishop f3, we win a pawn. Okay, we give some initiative by by doing that. So let's do this way. Let's take. We're gonna do this a little bit differently. Knight takes knight d5. Mm -hmm. When you have two bishops, you want to open up the position, guys. Open it up and uh, then start putting pressure. I 
knight d5, bishop c4. Takes, queen takes. I mean, we could have taken bishop e5, but we just thought about it. We just made the game. How about that, huh? Little track Matika mm -hmm. on g2. The power of two bishops, guys, that's fine. Bishops are worth more because, you know, you always have this diagonal pressure, this potential, okay? So that's why we always keep the bishops, okay? Yeah. What part of Armenia are you from and how old were you when you started playing chess? I was born in Ar Yerevan, Armenia, the capital, and then uh, started playing chess when I was five years old. Mm. So. So, all right, excellent. So let's see here. We move on to another game. This was a pretty nice game. We got a good position and press. Okay, we have a strong player, 1900. Let's see here. Are we gonna play another check perk? What do you think, another check perk, Caleb? Mm, sure, but I like the French. You like the French? Uh-huh. All right. Knight f6. C6. Yeah, this actually I have queen b6. This bishop e3 is a little shaky because of queen b6. Hmm. We have put pressure on b2. Now knight g4 comes in, attacking the bishop. Now e5, we get a tempo. So this is pretty good for black. So, um, knight b7. Seven, right? It's not very good for white to castle here because I will go queen c7 and then I have uh, b5. b5 like this. I have a knight d3 here too, actually. Knight d3 and knight f1. So it's knight f1, knight f4. Take, 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 take. Okay, I just go back, I guess. It's actually, uh, I go queen c7 and b5. Uh, A3, that, that seems bad. Yeah, now I don't... You have a lever. Pawn lever. Now, now yeah, B4 is going to be very, very strong. Okay, what's going on here? Let's castle first. C5. We got B4 coming up. Someone asks if you ever met Petrosian, and I assume he's talking no. about Tigran Vartanovich. Vartanovich? Well, no, I wasn't. I was passed away when I was like one or two years old, so I never had a chance to meet him, but I went to the chess school named after him. That's where I learned how to play chess, and that's where my career started. Take. Okay, I was thinking he might do this, but I did not think that this is going to be that great for him. But maybe... Okay, I want to try something interesting. Okay, I want to give up a pawn, Caleb. This is just a this is a positional sacrifice, guys. 
just just to open things up a little bit okay mm. uh, now we have a strong B file and after Bishop e6 we'll have some good pressure on him mm -hmm. Another question this queen say so where are you going Ooh, ooh, this is like really dangerous now so we got to get rid of that defender right okay look Mm -hmm. That bishop is his only defender, so we get rid of him. The knight is still out of the game there, on the rim. And... Okay, uh, it feels like we're going to have some mm. ideas here. Check. Are we going to do this? Are we going to do this, Caleb? <laughs> Let's have some fun. I don't know if it really works, but... Uh, check. Wait, wow. What is this? This is not gonna work. Come on, this is ridiculous. This is not gonna work. Check. Yeah. I wonder who that is. Cheka. Cheka. Oh. So many ways to win here. How do we win this? All right. Rook takes. We take. All right, let's just take this way. There were other ways to win, but this is just simpler. Knight h5 is also a threat here. Knight h5, knight f4. <laughs> mm. What is the score here? Four and a half, seven and a half. This is like an all-time score against this person? Yeah, yeah. Wow. How they do that? Uh, what's going on here? All right, let's get this queen here. Okay. Check. Check it to the king, and he has to take, bishop takes, wins the game, or... If it goes to e4, we go queen d5, mate. Mm -hmm. Somebody asks, who would win in a dance competition? You or Ben Feingold? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not a big dancer. so I've, I know Ben likes to dance, so he, he's, he's probably good at that. Okay. Okay, guys. So what is going on here? He's, should we check and then take? I mean, all right, let's just take, let's just take. Take more pawns. We just take more stuff. Take. Wow, what is this? Rook? Some people don't resign. Yeah. Uh, yep, that's the, that's the game right there. Another check perk victory, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's definitely a, a pretty good, pretty go good opening to play for Blitz, guys. So definitely recommend you do that. So, um, okay, we're probably going to get the last two, okay? The last two games. Uh, and I have some lectures later this evening, guys, and these lectures will going to be recorded and uploaded. So tune in for those lectures, okay? Uh, tonight we're going to record them and upload on the YouTube channel. So we're going to do a little Nimzo Indian defense, mix it up a little bit. Let's see. 
Um, I like playing in Nimzo. It's a good opening. And there are different ways you can play this. Uh, you know, you, you can go for main lines or you can just play normal lines. So, so let's see here. Could be six, not be seven. Take. Not seven. B six. So are you going to play for e5 or c5? Uh, I don't know yet. It really depends on how he reacts a little bit mm -hmm. uh, in this position. If, if depending how what setup he chooses. If he plays f3 or he you plays e4. If he plays f3, you go for yeah. c5. Yeah. yeah, I have to watch out for my d6 a little bit here. So that's something I got to do. play for e5 in this position, but he has bishop f5, I guess. Let's just go c5. <coughs> Rook c8, you know, just mm -hmm. solid. And, you know, with time advantage, it's, it's just, it's a good opening for blitz. You're very solid. You're very solid, very compact, no weaknesses. You said black has an advantage? Not necessarily an advantage, but it's just a comfortable position to play in. I mean, it's got weak pawns. What is oh. this? Isn't this just a pawn? Maybe we're missing something, but looks like it's just a pawn for now. Okay. Okay. Six. Queen e7, rook a d8. Queen e7. Rook f8, rook a d8. Mm -hmm. You know, up a pawn. Uh, some more trades. Take, we can take back with the pawn if we want to. And you probably do want to, right? Probably. Isn't this is a trapped piece, Caleb? Mm, looks like it. Trapito, right? Trapito mm -hmm. here. Just take with the G pawn. No, I can take with the queen and I'm hitting the rook. Uh, Even better. Why double up the pawns? <laughs> Why double up, Caleb? Unnecessary. Unnecessary, right, Caleb? Thank you. Yeah, I missed the rook was hanging. Gotta look at the whole board here, guys. The whole board. And now we come back to get the bishy as well here with a check. <laughs> Yeah, this one was just not that great. Ooh. What are we up? Two pieces? Rook and a piece? 
yeah, this is just hopeless. Let's try to mate. Okay, all right. When you're ahead, you always straight, absolutely, okay? Okay, guys, and we're going to do one more game, the last game, okay? And we're going to have a matchup from a player from Bulgaria. D4. London. Somebody said you played a London, right? Mm -hmm. Let's play London. Just for, for our uh, fans here, so they can see that, you know... I don't play the London, but I'll play this game, guys. This is what Carlson played against me, so I kind of know the ideas here. So the point is you play h3 early here somewhere to have this bishop h2 idea. Okay, this, I don't know about this, d5. Now we play for knight d5, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can actually let take here, take mm -hmm. back with the e pawn. So, yeah, this is already bad actually I think because no he needs to play c5 yeah but still yeah it's it feels like uh, we're gonna anchor the knight only five and we're gonna have some good attacking prospects you know so we anchor mm -hmm. the knight and it's like a French the knight is very annoying only five very very annoying so we go say rookie one takes we take back with the f pawn course it's like I'm playing the French defense yeah but it's but like he's playing the French uh, but yeah. with a bad bishop oh man yeah. c4. c4 I think is probably not a very good move <sighs> c4 is probably not that great and uh, we have a3 ideas yeah c4 is just terrible yeah the bishop guys the bishop is just really really bad okay a5, I'm not sure what my opponent is trying to do, so let's just bring our pieces in, okay? Knight g5 is in the horizon here. Mm -hmm. Some potential ideas coming up there. Uh, I don't know. This I'm going to take this way. I can take back with a knight. Take with an f-pawn. I think so, okay. Yeah, this is just the bishop is really bad, guys. So uh, if he plays knight seven, now we play h four, setting up which idea? Bishop h bishop seven. Bishop h seven, guys, setting up the Greek gift sacrifice. Bishop h seven, knight g five, follow up with queen g four or queen h five. So now he has to react, otherwise Greek gift tactic will win the game here on the spot. <sighs> F five, ooh, Caleb. But that just creates a huge weakness, you know? Huge mm -hmm. weakness on e six. Yeah, there's going to be some very serious consequences coming here. Knight g5, attacking on e6, attacking on h7. Mm, knight f8, I guess. Okay, knight f8. Well, we bring more pieces in, right? Bring everybody to the party now. <laughs> My plan is very simple. Rook e5, double up, or rook e3, double up the rooks. It's just going to be very bad for him. White has a very easy plan here, guys. And we are going to break through and win. G5. Cementing the rook on E5. Yeah, you know, when you win. in a position like this, it just plays by itself. You, mm -hmm. know, you, don't, you don't have to worry about finding all the best moves. You just... Bishop on c8 is not even a piece. <laughs> if we take what? Is he going to move the knight and. Hmm. Take, he's going to move the knight. Okay, so we probably have to go here. Now I'm thinking maybe we shouldn't have put it on e5, just queen g3, just to make sure there are no tricks with e5, you know? Mm -hmm. Double up the rooks. And that's just that weakness only six is just going to be very difficult to defend. Uh, 
very tempting. But okay, let's go here first, Caleb. Double up the rooks on a target. The bishop is just really bad and now coming in now. Everybody coming in. Some more pressure. Okay. Just want to take only six, you know. Another pawn. What would you have done on knight c5? Knight c5, queen c6, I think. No, uh, bishop d7. Uh, hey, knight c5, bishop d7. My position is pretty good. Maybe I can even sacrifice the queen there too, you know, like take mm -hmm. on c5. Mm -hmm. But yeah, perhaps he should have done that. So, what is he trying to do here? I can take another pawn here. I can just take another pawn here. I probably didn't play the best way here, but it's still good enough. Interesting knight g6. Opa! That's important four key right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, excellent, excellent. We had a good, good session, guys. Thank you, everybody, for playing. It was a lot of fun. And sorry we didn't get to play everybody. We still have 15 uh, people in the queue. But that's for next time, guys. And make sure you tune in next week, right? Next week, same time. Mm -hmm. And it'll be... Uh, unfortunately, this is my last day as Grandmaster Resident. And I'm getting ready for my trip to Europe uh, to play in Isle of Man. So there'll be another Grandmaster coming in. And he will be playing. So make sure you guys tune in and uh, play uh, the next Grandmaster. So thanks, everybody, for playing and the questions, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.